Do you know what my favorite part of new updates is coming to the game, guys? It's not the content, it's not the characters, it's quality of life. And that's what they've showed here today in the developer radio. Now, I know, Mtash has made a video, uh, Gotcha Smacks made a video, a lot of other creators have made videos on this already. But I want to give my unique perspective, because I am going to give the perspective of me as playing the game right now on my main account and then also me coming to it as like a new free-to-play player coming to the game because i do have multiple accounts so i have multiple different experiences i don't like to get my head stuck into one experience so much so that i block out the experience of the other so i'll be giving my experience or i guess my i guess opinions on all three of those because i feel like the new player experience for this might be kind of rough. I'm not gonna lie, guys. New players might cringe. Me and my, like, my main account, these seem absolutely amazing, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Voice of the Galaxy Developer Radio, basically, why do I have these on? I always have those on. I don't even have anything playing in them anyways. Simulated Universe is getting a massive update. And basically what Simulated Universe is, is we're getting something called the Divergent Universe. Now, we're not gonna go into this. You can watch someone else's video like Vulcan's or Gotcha Smack's video. Basically, this is like an overhaul to simulated universe or that's what I get anyways And what you're gonna be able to do with this is basically rapidly get your planar ornaments Meaning you complete simulated universe one time you can save a set go fight all the bosses So instead of fighting all the intermediate stages So there's like 13 stages instead of doing 13 stages You're doing three stages fighting all three bosses collecting the rewards so on and so forth with your saved curios and uh, Passives and whatever the other things are called the little little special cards you get. I don't know what the name of them are anyways. Um, yeah, you'll be able to quickly go through and claim these rewards. So it basically makes any reason to pull for Acheron or any reason I pull for Acheron obsolete. I didn't pull for Acheron for the damage. I pulled for Acheron due to how fast you could get through Simulated Universe because she was a quality of life character. Now, they have kind of ruined that um, and now uh, Acheron's been power crept, guys. Sorry if you pulled Acheron for this reason, but I think this is going to be good for all players. Say you're a new player, it's in the game, right? You're struggling really, really bad, right? And you finally get a run. You finally, oh my god, I finally just beat it. But I had to get so lucky to beat this. Now it'll allow you to save those rewards and then you can just go bang, bang, bang and claim as many planet ornament sets as absolutely possible because you'll be able to save that and then use your progress that you had when you beat it that one time to beat it again and again so you can beat it on a more consistent basis. Obviously, for late game players, this just saves a lot of time in general, rather than having to go through each stages. Even with Acheron having to do, 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 it does still take time to click on cards and stuff too, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the rewards it's giving us. Guys, it's going to be giving us Stellar Jades and Level Up Materials, obviously. This is also going to count towards your weekly net count, so it kind of makes, uh, I don't know how this is going to work. Keep in mind, but this is going to basically make the original simulated universe obsolete because I actually if this is an overhaul I, this does this what for the current simulated universe and let you claim rewards I don't know what this is. Is this a separate mode? They're adding or is this just an overhaul? and They're gonna be calling it divergent universe now. I don't know what it is leave your thoughts in the comments down below I would love to hear what you guys think on that uh, what do you guys think about this in general, right? Because I think overall this is a really good update. Obviously, we're not done with this yet. Uh, we're also going to have a restart challenge button. So this is for all of the people that really, really struggle uh, with Simulator Universe, Golden Gears, and stuff like that. They can hit restart because that bug hoed me. He did three attacks in a row. He killed my RNG, and that's not right. The RNG was messed up. My Ting Yun shouldn't have been targeted five times, okay? That's basically, that. that's what that's for, okay? You can restart the challenge instead of having to go all the way back to the beginning and then restart. Which can be a nuisance, especially if you were in the last stage of Golden Gears. You die, you're like, oh my god. Now you can just restart and have a dandy fine day with that. That's great. I love Simulated Universe change. I really like doing Simulated Universe, honestly. I think it's one of the best game modes they've ever made. But that's not the only thing they're added. Leave your comments in the comment section down below on what you think of this new Simulated Universe game mode. Now, let's go ahead and hop into the new permanent game mode, Apocalyptic Shadow. This is a basically like a replacement for one of the filler weeks they had for Memory of Chaos plus Pure Fiction. Normally, guys, you would know we had Pure Fiction... Memory of Chaos, Pure Fiction, or Memory of Chaos, Pure Fiction, Memory of Chaos. Now we're replacing one of those, right? So instead of having two Memory of Chaos, two Pure Fiction, we're going to be having Apocalyptic Shadow, Pure Fiction, Memory of Chaos. They're all still six weeks. Keep in mind, guys, you are still getting the same amount of rewards that you would be getting if, the, if this wasn't even in the game, right? It's still on a six-week basis. They didn't reduce the time, so it doesn't reduce the amount of times you get rewards. 
it's the same amount of rewards, don't get it twisted, the same amount of stellar J's that you would have originally got. But what is this game mode? In Apocalyptic Shadow, Trailblazers must face the materializations of the finality and defeat bosses they have faced before. Those formidable materializations have slight differences between them and regular enemy bosses. Trailblazers can check out details by reading the enemy's details in battle. We hope this will bring new combat strategies and richer gameplay experiences to Trailblazers. Mind your team setup and combat strategy to defeat formidable foes and earn high points to score reward. Now, what do I hope this game mode's like? We already have Memory of Chaos, we already have Pure Fiction. How I see it right now is we need something, a big, just chunky boss. Throw a big, chunky boss at us and just let us go to town on that chunky boss. I want to see something that is super good for hunt characters, super good for single target characters. This, that's what I want this pure fit, that's what I want the new mode to be. I want it to be solely focused on one enemy, just go as far as you can. And like, the score will depend on how much damage you can do to the boss. So if you do X amount of damage to the boss, or you get the boss this low on HP, then you get these rewards, and you have a possibility to kill them, right? Because I think, right, this is how I see it. I see pure fiction as just like, taking Memory of Chaos, but taking all like the side enemies, and just throwing them in multiple waves and that. I see Memory of Chaos is like kind of like pure fiction, but you have bosses thrown in there too. I want to see, take all the extra enemies out, leave the bosses, make them chunkier, give them new abilities, full send them like a guild boss. Okay, that's what I really want to see with this new game mode here. I think that would be super, super fun. I, I'm going to give you some more thoughts on this in the video. For me, it seems fun for like my account or whatever, my, my normal account that I play on, my pay to win account or whatever you want to call it. For a free one player, I do have some differing thoughts on this, right? So, let's go ahead and talk about scheduled rotation. Obviously, I mentioned this before, guys. We're going to have six weeks of Apocalyptic Shadow, six weeks of Pure Fiction, and six weeks of Memory of Chaos. There will never be a time where another Memory of Chaos overlaps with another one, so whatever that's the Memory of Chaos is that is there, you have six weeks to complete it. You're, you're not waiting for another Memory of Chaos. Also, team setup functionality optimizations. I love quality of life. Honestly, that's my favorite thing when any update comes out. I love seeing quality of life. I love seeing UI changes. That's just something that, oh, it really gets my gears going, brother. Sorry, I've been driving a motorcycle and I'm starting to speak like a, a, a motorhead now. I, I don't know what you could say to that. Anyways, let's talk about team setup function, organization, whatever it's called. Pro players can set their teams in advance when playing the above game modes. The system will allow more quickly bring up their preset teams and enter the game directly. I like the use of saying preset team. Because of this, if it is how I think it's going to work, hopefully it's like you can set preset teams that you want to use for every memory of chaos. You throw them in there, the memory change one or two, right? I like seeing preset because I want to see preset relics in the game. I want to see me give, g being able to set a relic set, like have a preset relic set that I can put on any character. And I like them using the terminology of preset team because this might allude to in the future adding in preset relics. So I can just have like a set of relics, name this relic set. Oh, this is a this is for my break comp, right? Or this is for my Zhui Yi, right? Put that there. So if I take bits and pieces to put on their character, when I want to put that set back on their character, I don't have to go looking through all of my relics. It just boop, pops it back on there. So I do really like the, the wording here of saying preset team. Uh, but let's continue through this. Additionally, new function trailblazers to drag and drop additional characters from node 1 to node 2. Basically, it'll allow you to be like, oh, I want Akron on this side, but I want to keep the rest of the team here. So just drag, drop. It basically swaps th those two characters that you drag and dropped. Very nice. Also, RIP guide makers that make MOC content. This is absolutely going to kill your career. Also, on top of that, this is uh, this is going to be pretty interesting because I think this could add a competitive nature in the game if they do this correctly. Now, consult your friends' ideas on their best team lineups. Now, guys, in 2.2, what we're getting is the ability to see what our friends use in Memory of Chaos. What do they use to beat Memory of Chaos? So, say we go into MOC 12. I can't beat Mach 12! Am I not using the right team? Now you can go into Mach 12, see what teams your friends are using. So this is, this basically throws out the window. You don't even need to go to a guide maker to see oh, how to beat Mach 12. You don't need to do that anymore because you can just see what your friends are using to beat them, right? And then in future updates, it'll also show the relics. So you really won't need guide makers after it shows the relics, the stats they have, the light cones they have. That's going to be great. Now, wh what I said about this, right, is why I think this could become competitive 
if they add in cycle count if you start seeing people with zero cycle counts i can assume that we'll see people just have full friends list of people that are like in a discord and like want to be really competitive like oh this guy beat this mach 12 with a zero cycle i wish they would maybe throw in like tries or attempts i think that would be really hard to code in though because it, it already shows you tries and attempts but it's for the whole mach 12 oh, i just hit my mic anyways i think that'd be really cool to see i think it could add a competitive nature to the game which I think that's what a lot of people have been wanting is a competitive nature. So I think if we have this friends list available, if I think if it shows a cycle count we use to take it, that's really good because then we can see when people are capping saying, yeah, you too, your guy is dog shit. I knew what cycle with this team right here. Now you can actually check them on it. Be like, okay, dude, no, you didn't. It didn't even, you don't even have a zero cycle on here at all. So I do think this could be a really cool functionality. Now, like I was saying before, I think this could be bad for free to play or new players, I should say, new, mainly new players, right? Because now new players, when they start prancing their way into the end game, normally they have two teams, right? Now these two teams, honestly, with my free to play account right now, I had to make a choice. Do I want to beat Memory of Chaos or do I want to beat Pure Fiction, right? Because Pure Fiction requires a different set of characters for me to beat that. Mock requires a different set of characters for me to beat that, right? And now this new game mode is probably going to require you another set of characters to beat that, right? Obviously, there will be some crossover with your sustained characters and your buffers. But you're going to be having to build a lot more DPS, right? A lot more DPSs in general. Because if they do this how I think they're going to do it and put one big chunky boss, now you're going to need a super, super good single target damage dealer, or at least two to three of them to cover typings, right? Or you could run Silver Wolf in that matter, right? I think Silver Wolf stonks would go up so high if this were the case. Silver Wolf would be, would be amazing in this game mode, especially for newer free-to-play players. Now, we have to beat Memory of Chaos, which doesn't necessarily require all this stuff, right? It doesn't necessarily require you to b build like full on single target you kind of want like aoe with strong single target damage that's what you want for memory of chaos with pure fiction you want full aoe damage really right so i think this could be pretty rough on like new players coming to the game because they're gonna have to make a choice do i a go for pure fiction do i go for apocalyptic shadow or do i go for memory of chaos and i have to build all these characters to do that and i know a lot of people will come into the game or not a, a lot of players will come into the game with the mentality of well, I just messed my account up because I can't beat any of them now because they've been trying to focus on too many things at once. I think this could be weird for new players. Uh, skill issue probably on their part, but uh, it does require a lot of resources. I think this will increase the amount of resources that new players need to put into the game. Uh, more time they have to put into the game even. So, anyways, guys, with that being said, that's going to do it for today's video. What are your thoughts on this new Memory of Chaos? Me, personally, I love it. I love quality of life, so I love this update. <laughs> Anything that does with, like, great quality of life stuff, I love it. Content secondary, I'm fine with content. I, I, I can just beat it like that. But if quality of life is in there and makes the content easier for me to beat or more fun for me to beat or easier just to get into, then that's all I, that I need personally, right? Anyways, guys, that's going to do it. Bye, guys. See you later. It's been 15 minutes, and I'm, 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 I'm checking out. Cha-ching! I'm clocked out, baby. Bye.